Some of you guys thought I forgot about MotoGP that debuted this weekend in Qatar. Come on. Okay, you were right. Somehow I read the schedule and thought the first race was April 29 in Valencia. Typical American, the Middle East doesn't matter. To us, it's the Pandora of Earth. Invade, denigrate, harvest the resources. That sarcasm comment is just sarcasm. So today we'll talk MotoGP and the WTF news that's already out there after race one. Plus, get ready for our visit to Long Beach. Let's finally talk about these new Indy cars. Also, did you hear? Actor, driver, team owner Patrick Dempsey is making a docudrama about his racing at Le Mans this year. But I've seen his racing already. So, I guess it'll be more in the spirit of Kenny Block. You know, where racing means build a show versus showing real results. Typical. But Audi's doing another Truth in 24, Truth in 24 2, blending real movie making with real performance. And Drive, we're going to do something around Le Mans 24 in 2012 as well. And you know, both of us, it'll be real, honest, authentic racing coverage. Now, we offered to help Dr. McDreamy with his show, but I guess he didn't like our ideas on how to cover his Le Mans racing. Hey, Patrick, Truth in 24, just like that, we need to be real, authentic, and honest. So the title we picked for your trek to Le Mans? Mid-pack on the Mulsanne. <laughs> no? Sucking at Lasarth? No? <laughs> MotoGP 2012, 1,000cc designs. Defending champion Casey Stoner and Honda, showing P1 pace all through winter testing. Fewer factory teams, but strong satellite teams, still with prototype bike tech connections. And the CRT bikes, claiming rule teams. Those bikes cost less, and we'll explain CRT in a bit. But Orge Lorenzo, not Stoner, was on pole. Lorenzo's Yamaha teammate, Ben Spies, was fourth. Stoner was second. Pedrosa, his teammate, was seventh, but not at turn one. At the race start, Danny was battling for P1 by turn one. And that set the race-long battle. Lorenzo, Pedrosa, Stoner. Now, it ain't the bigger engines that made the difference in the racing at Cutter, nor the electronics that still manage the bikes with the riders. As always in modern racing, it's the tires that determine the quality of racing, specifically tire degradation. And the new spec Bridgestone, like the Pirellis in F1 and the Firestones with IndyCar, are trying a design that degrades grip more rapidly to improve the racing, the passing, and, in theory, put the racing back in the wrists of the riders and the hands of the drivers. But degradation rewards smoothness and race management, making me think Lorenzo is Alonso, Stoner is Hamilton. And you know what else? You guys, pick up the rest of this MotoGP to F1 analogies. When Lorenzo lost the lead and Stoner pulled out a gap, there was no panic. Orge waited till the final laps to push on the tires that he controlled, that he managed, to have the grip left at the end and took back the lead. Stoner looked like he had the race, but maybe his race pace let his tires go off by the end, costing him not just P1, but P2. As teammate, Pedrosa got back by Stoner on the last laps as well. Stoner said it was his arm tiring, but maybe he was masking his racecraft malpractice. P4 and 5 finishers were the satellite Yamahas of Tech 3 racing, putting three Yamas in the top five versus the two Honda. Now the first CRT bike was Colin Edwards in P11 on the BMW Suter. CRT simply stated our production-based motors in prototype frames, which allows BMW and Aprilia to enter the MotoGP fray. It adds nine bikes to the show, maybe entices a manufacturer or two to step up to real MotoGP bike and engine building. But the best CRT qualifier was Colin Edwards, and he was three seconds back. I'm giving you a link to the CRT teams and all the riders. And then there's Valentino Rossi and Ducati. This is turning into an Italian opera. Much drama, and there will be pain. Valentino qualified only 12th, two seconds off Lorenzo's pole, while Rossi's teammate, Nicky Hayden, he did Q5 in qualifying, but he was still one second off. The race went no better for Rossi, P10, just ahead of the CRT field. To continue the F1 analogy, Rossi maybe is the two-wheel Michael Schumacher. You know, does the racing equipment need to exactly fit his style of driving and riding? Is the fire to race hard and push, is it lost? Or is this a Ferrari team thing? You know, Ducati may be trying too many things in the design. The Ducati team is not in harmony. The operation is not clicking. And all in all, it just looks bad, and I feel, I feel sad for the whole thing. So is it the doctore, not the patient, that needs the sympathy prayers and the worry? We're gonna find out. 
We'll know more soon because remember, according to me, the 2012 MotoGP season starts in Spain, April 29th. Not really, it'll be race two. And who wants to bet that Lorenzo leaves his home race with a two race win lead in the championship? Okay, I don't wanna to go too long today and since we're in the spirit of bikes, I wanna give Wes Seiler and his friends their Ride Apart show debut some room. It's coming up on drive right after us. So good luck and go Wes, John and Grant. Okay, to end Shakedown, let's put a picture of that new IndyCar up on the screen. Oh, there it is. We're gonna go to Long Beach. IndyCar has had two road races already and they tested at Indy this past weekend. I want your opinion about this car because I'm hoping we're looking at a one year ugly issue that'll be corrected with the new body kits that are supposed to be allowed by 2013. And honestly, ugly, it could be worse. It was in the old days. Now here are some new IndyCar facts. The new car was supposed to show IndyCar moving forward as an advanced racing series. Delta may have been too radical for these cats, but fat and heavy looking is not the best answer in my opinion. And it's slower than the old car. At Indy, in its high speed Indy 500 configuration, the target was 220 to 225 miles an hour. They only got up to 218, and that was with a huge draft. So no more track records, and the PR spinning is already beginning. Indy won't be about speed anymore, it's about the close racing, BS. Racing is speed, Indy is speed. The NASCAR Brickyard 500, that's the close racing, but it's BS to Indy tradition. And Elio Castroneves says the new car blows. Well, what he really meant was it blows such a big hole in the air that you can't get close to another car to make a pass or to race close the way they want to promote. Cost control was built into the new car for the teams, but it's costing more to run right now. Build quality is not great. Driving dynamics are still needing improvement. Now it's good to have new engine manufacturers Chevy and Lotus joining Honda in IndyCar, but Lotus is a joke. And balancing the performance is either another joke to the purity of racing, or if you don't do it, it just negates the competitiveness of half the field. But everyone respects IndyCar CEO Randy Bernard. And I hope to speak with him and Bo Barfield, the other guy in the picture, the new IndyCar race director. Both bring sanity and opportunity to the series. And racer guys like Penske, Ganassi, and Ray Hall aren't idiots. They're not going to let IndyCar fail. Well, again. And don't get me started on the US TV broadcast. I swear there's an 80s disco ball hanging in the announcer's booth. The race coverage feels so old and dated. So we're going to go to Long Beach and see it all for ourselves and for you. Now some racing quick shifts to end the show. A V8 Mustang won in Formula Drift in Long Beach. Justin Pollock got the job done. The 1,000 horsepower Toyota Sora did not but it did finish P3. Another Audi R8 won in GT1. Another Audi R8 won, Jesus Christ. It was 1-2 actually. Come on Porsche, time to sell more race cars. Audi's getting your gig done. And Skoda won the IRC rally in Ireland. 1-2 as well. <laughs> Which if my Italian mother was still watching and she stopped after the Rossi story, I'd get a call from her about why am I talking about the Irish. Eh, it's an old world thing. <laughs>